while back we did a video where you know it was titled something like engineers take a look at the apple airpod max or something and people it a lot of people watched it and they were it was it was because we come at it as engineers i guess and designers when we look at something we come at it from a different angle we see it from a different angle kind of like when you did a, a video a while back <laughs> on uh, opening refrigerator doors right yeah. and mm-hmm. it's like i'm supposed to do another one of those yeah <laughs> well, people need to tell me what i need to do it on but mm-hmm. i mean you know it's something to discuss because it's kind of you know when you think about it, it when you people see things from their various angles depending on their or whatever their education is right so to speak or skill sets or knowledge base or what have you and it's kind of kind of neat to think about how people perceive the same thing differently even though it's the same thing yeah we clearly look at things very differently from the average consumer if you look at what the average person says about a product when they're talking about just receiving it or reviewing it or whatever Typically, they're not talking about how it's manufactured, why it's made a certain way, or things like that. The coatings, the finishes, the regularity, the packaging. Uh, they're talking about more in in context of their experience and um, just the general aesthetics, the the feel of the product, not the hows and the whys. I guess. Yeah, like I you know some people like you know they'll, they'll, they'll have box openings or whatever. You know, unboxings. Yeah, unboxings, right? And they're ta- <laughs> and they're taking a look at how everything comes out the box and all that yeah. stuff. And I think from an engineering perspective, you probably wouldn't even think too much about that. You're like, basically you want to get the damn thing out of the box and take a look at the piece, right? You're right. not worried about the packaging. Well, I'd be you more know. concerned about how the cardboard's manufactured and well, whatnot. Well, sure, right. Yeah, does it look at what hold up? Whether or not has yeah. coatings on it. Will it protect Agreed. it? Yeah. yeah, how thick the foam is, is it what type of foam they use for the sides? And some like, people do care about that in the unboxing videos. They're like, oh, this is yeah. well packaged, so it won't get damaged. Some do, yeah. 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 But they tend to be focusing on like one thing. Yeah. You know, or a couple, a few things where, but I think I think the majority of people probably just want to get the damn thing out of the box. <laughs> well, some people like to savor the unboxing, you know, especially yeah. on like a high end product. It's like, I guess take your time, you know. Yeah, that's not me. I like get yeah, the unbox as fast. Yeah, as I want to get the white cover off the thing yeah, and yeah. let's get it hooked up and go right to it. Yeah. Thing. So I guess yeah, you're right. Everyone's probably different in that respect. Mm. But see, that's what my point is that like you know when you think about it, how everyone has a different perspective on the same thing. You know, they, they see it differently from all different kinds of angles. And uh, you see that in discussions like, you know, where they get their first AB 1266. And usually the first thing you're saying, they're saying is like, whoa, this thing sounds really good type thing. That's usually the first thing. Or some people do. I know in some countries like in Germany, they're like, this thing's really built well. You know, it's, so they do. They, the first impression tends to be very depending on who the person is that's taking a look at it, which is kind yeah, of wild. for sure. I, I know, like, from a manufacturer's standpoint, I see peop- other manufacturers at, at shows and stuff, and they're always looking at products from how it's built and such. You know, they're not, you know, only focusing on sound. They're, like, looking at the construction and everything of the products, checking out finishes, because they're... Like, touchy they feel. Yeah, they know when they're building their product, like, how hard it is to get the finishes and stuff they want and fit yeah. and finish and stuff. So I see the manufacturers key in on that kind of stuff. Yeah. And... uh and then one time we had a one guy and he was looking really intently on a 1266 and we went over to go talk to him and he's like oh i'm i'm a machinist i was just wondering how this was built so he comes at it from a more of a manufacturer's kind of yeah. perspective of wondering how it was built yeah. and knowing how it could have been built so yeah definitely machinists def- they usually come at it from i know guy. i've seen that in the past too like years ago we doing a show and there was a amp manufacturer came into our room and uh, which happened to have another amp manufacturer and they knew each other but mm. both tube amps happened to be and she's looking at it going how do you make these things so inexpensive because they're relatively good value for the price from the one manufacturer and he's like well you know we're in a, the state we're in isn't really expensive to hire people and you know we, we keep we keep things lean and blah 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 you know and he's and she's like trying to figure out how is it because she's trying, obviously they're figuring out you know why is it we can't make something and sell it, uh, retail it for this price that they do and, and at this quality. You see a lot of you that. Mm-hmm. It seems like most manufacturers, when they're looking at a competitor or a similar product on the market, they're trying to understand how this product compares to them, whether or not they're running into the same challenges. And I think the reason for that is really simple because uh, at least a good manufacturer, designer really understands that you need to try to continually iterate, continually improve your product and push the boundaries of what's possible. Um, and a lot of times getting the finishes perfect, getting the price as low as possible is really a priority. And the consumers don't really see this, but of course manufacturers want the price to be as low as possible. They want it to work 
the way they expect, but they also want it to be as affordable as possible so they can get it in the hands of more people because higher price stuff doesn't sell as much, right? It's harder to sell. So everyone wants a really nice product, but they want to be able to do it in a way that's cost effective. So everyone's always kind of looking for a cheat code, so to speak, seeing how did they get this done? Did they have the same problems I have with fit and finish or getting these parts to match and things like that? You see a lot of that. So it seems like when someone's examining a product, they're kind of looking to see, are they having the same issues that I'm having? Right? How did they solve these issues? Yeah, How I see. can I use lessons to overcome them? A simple thing like a pen from an engineering perspective, right? You're looking at it a hundred different ways, the springs and the shapes and how they molded it and assembly and if it's going to last, right? The consumer, they're going like this and they start writing. And that's it, how, the, how it feels, right? right? It's a completely different take on the same product, you know, the same thing. They're not worried about how it's made. They expect it to work. <laughs> well, yeah. Where you, on the other hand, need to worry about every little thing, <laughs> you know, to make sure that it will work. And that's, that's my point is like, you know, you look at the way people uh, perceive uh, any object or anything they purchase, any purchase they make, completely different, different takes on it. Well, I think the biggest thing is uh, like cell phones these days. They all look the same on the outside now, but it's all the stuff on the inside that you don't see that they're changing that's actually making the difference, you know? Yeah, the outer shapes are so simple yeah. now. It's just a big screen They're all now, rounded you know? with a screen. But and they're changing all touch. kinds of stuff on the insides. Yeah. So They serve a similar end function, but they approach it in a very different way. And the feature sets are just so wildly, there's so much to know about any one particular phone. All the hardware is different, but they accomplish the same goal. Yeah, right. You can still make a call. Yep. It, ha it has range. It doesn't break up when you go anywhere. Almost all of them work now in pretty much any setting, at least in, this, in the U.S. It's not a real issue with range like it used to be back in the day where you'd have issues. You know, I'm sure there's some rural areas and so on in there. Yeah, probably. But for the most part, the cellular networks are so well built out that these things just, you expect them to work everywhere. But there's a bit of bias you know? there because you're only really seeing the commercial successes that are available to you as a consumer when you go to a store. That's true. You see the stuff that the store is willing to carry, the stuff that already is working. Um, it isn't always the case in hi-fi. In hi-fi, a lot of times the volumes are so low, you could find some really obscure niche products. Yeah, if you're the first 100 buyers or something, uh, depending on the company, you know, you, you may be one of the guinea pigs. <laughs> you may be. You know, it depends on how refined the company is and how long they've been around. A brand new company with their first product, eh, you don't know. It depends on how long they worked on it, how long they weeded out the bugs. You know, Even still. I've seen a lot of that in audio over the years, like he just suggested. You know, you just you don't know. You know, it could be their first amplifier they've ever built. And some people are excited to get that first amplifier. Yep, they want, they want to hear it. Different. Absolutely. And that's okay. You know, they're not, and again, that person's not worried about the bill because they figure they can fix it. They can make it work, you know, um, so be it. So, you know, but again, that's that's the consumer side of it. And the, the average consumer is just looking at it going, I can't wait to hear this. I can't wait to listen to it. Right. It's the first one, you know, and I've been hearing really good things about this guy, what this guy can do. So mm -hmm. it's a different take on it where you and me would want to pop the cover, look at it, go Jesus, what the hell's going on? In here? How'd they get it done? Yeah, right. Did they, yeah, they didn't. Obviously, you could have done this, this, and this. It would have made a lot easier assembly. I mean, you look at it from a standpoint of how easy to assemble, disassemble, repair, right? Where the guy to put it together might not think that far ahead because they haven't fixed one yet, because they haven't made one yet. Hmm. The things I often find most interesting on products is the thing that nobody ever talks about. It's typically the stuff that someone at that company that designed it is worried about. Because inevitably, the average consumer is totally blissfully unaware of this, typically. But in almost every product, any crazy consumer product, doesn't matter how cheap, mundane, meaningless, something in the process, someone that designed that is worried whether or not it's going to work, whether or not it's <laughs> going to be robust, reliable, serviceable, long-term, whether it's machine that makes this thing is going to work. <laughs> right? You'd hope someone's worried about that. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of, like, even in that pen. There yeah. could be a handful of things in there that someone, when they design it, they said, we don't know if this is going to work. Because well, they're they, doing it in a way that's so cheap. I bet they made a machine cost. just to click this thing like X amount of times, you know, say, okay. It, right, and that's it how you probably, prove it to yourself. It should probably click twice as many times as it's anticipated in its lifetime would need to be or some yeah. percentage above so that they know the failure points outside the range of usage, right? Right, because yeah. until somebody proves it, until somebody comes out, does a thing, and skips a step that is totally meaningless to the end result and proves to everybody else that you actually don't need to do this process that everyone else thought you did, 
everyone's reluctant to skip it because they're worried. They're worried, hey, there's gonna be problems with our product yeah. and we're gonna lose credibility. Um, but inevitably someone decides to take the plunge. They make a test rig and they, they go through the effort of proving to themselves that you could do it without doing that. That's the, that's the stuff that I find interesting. There's a lot of stuff like that where occasionally there's like a crazy trivial difference from one product to the next and they figured out a, ske- a step that they could get rid of and it has no impact to the performance or the lifespan of the device. Well, I think the, the ultimate example of this is um, any space-related things. You know all those engineers, they're all really smart, right? So, yeah. You know, and uh, they're, they're usually worried until they see things like, you know, land on Mars. They're not, you know, they're, they're worried the whole time, even though they tried their hardest. Mm. And it's not even a cost constraint with that. It's usually a mass constraint, you know? So they're trying to make everything as light as possible while yeah. still working. It's the unknowns. And yeah, if it's never been and done There's before, a lot of unknowns. Well, yeah. when you design it, you know everything that could go wrong, typically. And so you're always worried. Well, you hope well, so. You what if this happens? What if that happens? It's not going to be able to tolerate it in these particular situations. Right. You're but always yet, worried about but the yet failures. you couldn't build it to tolerate that because right. it requires it wouldn't work. A million other steps and mm-hmm. six 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 hundred kilograms more of weight, and right. you couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. So you, 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 there are risks involved. Sure. As a consumer yeah. product, we talked about this before, but you can make a coat hanger that's twenty dollars. That's the most amazing coat hanger ever. A quarter ever. inch steel. But <laughs> nobody's going to buy it, right? You're going to sell two of them, so it's, yeah. it's meaningless. It doesn't really matter. Right. The things have to be attainable. It and will so last forever. Everyone tries to work to make their product as attainable as possible, but it depends on where you are. If you're in the upper, upper range, sometimes it's just really difficult well, because to make things affordable. Bottom line, when you're making something simple as this, you have to be practical. Right. You know, you have to. In the higher end of things, we don't have to be practical. <laughs> because, we, we lost practical. Because at some point you're saying, all right, well, let's just throw everything at it and whatever what it costs, it costs, and that's the price, you know? So Yeah, but, there's but, so many different tiers to that. Yeah, true. But you could do that in the high end, you know? It's kind of like a Rolex watch, right? It's like, right. Well, let's make this watch band out of solid gold. Mm-hmm. Who cares? <laughs> whatever yeah. the price is, that's the price. Yeah, yeah Apple's you know? not doing that on their watch. Yeah, no, make it ask. Can, well, they did. They did why. make a gold one, but yeah. they kind of stopped making them. <laughs> In the comments, if, if if you guys want, give us give us something. What you look at when you first get a product, like what you know, when you first get something, open it up, headphone, whatever. What do you look at? I'm just curious. You know, I'd be curious to know, share ideas because I don't think about it. Even us manufacturers, we don't really talk much amongst each other about differences in each other's products it's kind of like you think about it but you don't say it yeah you're just looking at it yeah you know it'd be cool to hear what everyone looks at when they get something new you know yeah it's yeah. definitely different from the consumer facing side mm-hmm. yeah it would be cool so uh, i'd like to have an open discussion that one to be i think it'd be interesting to everybody and we'll try to comment as much as possible from our side too so on that note thank you everybody for watching and give us a th- thumbs up on this video and uh take care of yourselves